grade sevens. I hope you're ready for your next natural sciences lesson. I'm Helen and what we're going to look at today is how we use electricity in the home. We've been talking about energy transfers in this big system that takes potential energy from the coal and transfers it into electricity or electrical energy that consumers are going to use. Now in South Africa, Eskom is the company or the industry that produces electricity for consumption in South Africa. Sometimes Eskom is going to deliver that energy to individual settlements and homes and industries. Sometimes it distributes it to a municipality and the municipality then distributes it to the various consumers. But Eskom doesn't make the electricity and distribute it for free. It costs a great deal of money, not only to generate the electricity, but to build and maintain power lines and substations and distribute it to the consumers. So Eskom charges the consumers for the electricity used. In some places in the country, Eskom charges the consumer directly. In other places, Eskom will charge the municipality and then the municipality will charge the consumers. The bottom line is money. And we need to see that electricity costs money. And in South Africa, electricity is expensive. So, we need to think about ways to save our money. I haven't yet met anybody who would like to throw their money away and waste their money. Everybody wants to save money. But another reason why we need to use our electricity wisely is not only because it costs us, but because if we use less electricity, we are causing less of an environmental problem. So it all boils down to us, the consumer, how we use electricity in our homes, in our schools, in our businesses, in shops, and in factories as well. It's not just you, the householder, but it's big factory owners that have got to find ways of using electricity efficiently. But you are in grade seven. At this point in time, you do not own a shop or a big factory. So the only impact that you can have directly on energy use and electricity use is in your home. And that's what we're going to focus on is how you can make the first step towards energy efficiency in your home. So let's look at a number of pictures and try and analyze what is the picture advising us to do in our homes in order to save electricity. So let's look at this first picture. The first picture shows us what we call a filament light bulb and an energy saving light bulb. And it is showing us an arrow and suggesting that we move from filament light bulbs to energy savers. And if we make this move, we are going to be saving electricity. Now remember, the law of conservation of energy says we can't create it and we can't destroy it. But if we use less electricity, it means we are using the available power 
in a much more efficient way. It's going to cost us less and it's going to harm the environment less. So this is one thing that you can do. I'm not suggesting going around your house and smashing all of your ordinary old-fashioned filament light bulbs, but when one does break, why not replace it with an energy-saving device? Let's look at the next picture. We're seeing a kettle that is boiling. Now, let's say you need to make yourself one cup of coffee. Are you going to fill the kettle right up to the top and boil the whole kettle when in fact you only want one cup of water? You need to use your kettle wisely. We would only use a small amount of water in order to make one cup of coffee. So before you just walk into the kitchen every morning and switch on the kettle, look at how much water is in the kettle. And maybe if you say to your brother, your sister, your mother, Gogo, do you also want coffee? To boil the kettle once instead of many times is a way of being energy efficient. So think before you just automatically switch on the kettle, how much water do I need to boil? And therefore, how much water do I need to put in the kettle? What about this picture? What is this picture showing us? Well, this picture is showing us a light that has been switched on and the person is, looks like they are leaving the room. What should we do to lights when we leave the room? We need to remember that we should switch off our lights when we leave a room. We shouldn't leave our lights burning because there's no one in the room when we have left and all of that electricity therefore has gone to waste. Think of taking money and just tearing it up. That's what you're doing when you leave the lights switched on. And you know what? It's not your money. It's the money that your parents are working so hard to make. So you need to show them that you appreciate the fact that they've provided you with a house or a home that has lighting. And you need to think, how can I use it wisely and efficiently? Here we have a situation where we are cooking. Now, it could be that we're cooking with gas or it could be that we're cooking with electricity. So what can we do in order to be energy efficient with cooking? We need to make sure that wherever possible, we use a lid because the lid is going to trap our heat energy and that means we will need less heat energy in order to cook the food. Also, we must look at the size of the hot plate and the size of our pot and we must make sure that we are using a pot that matches the size of the hot plate so that we don't waste our heat energy. This picture refers to something called a sensor and it's linked to this picture that has a timer on it. Now sometimes we need to leave lights on for purposes of security. Maybe you are coming home very late at night and you need lights on to make sure that there is security. But Maybe we only need to put the light on when someone is walking or moving past. So we would install sensors which are going to switch on the lights only at night time, not during the day, and only when someone is moving. We could also install a timer so that lights only go on at night 
and are not left burning during the day. What about when we use a cooling system like an air conditioner or a heater and then we go and leave a window or a door open. In our house, when this happens, we say we're letting the penguins escape. We are heating up our house and then we open the window and what happens is all of the heat energy is going to move from our nice warm house into the surroundings and so there we've got heat loss or our heat from outside is going to move into our house and the cooling that we're doing is going to be useless. Do you know that if you use lamps instead of big lights that take lots of energy you're also going to be looking at saving electricity or using electricity efficiently. All right, so let's suggest ways to fix these problems in our homes. And what it means is that you're being mindful of how electricity is being used and how you could use it more efficiently. Using a heater all day and all night to warm the house. Are there other things that you could do? So, can you adjust your clothing, maybe? Can you use more blankets on a bed? We need to think of ways to reduce the amount of hours that our heater is left on. What about this one? Using the oven to warm the house. Well, the oven is going to consume a great deal of energy. So we need to, if we have to, use proper heaters that are designed to warm the house and we don't put on the oven to make the house warm. Running half loads in a washing machine, we need to fill the washing machine because that is what it was designed to do. It was designed for full loads and we're going to use, let's say, an hour's worth of electricity to do half a load, but if we do a whole load, we will still use that same amount of time. So we need to think about how we use our appliances. Using an electric blanket, wow, it's so lovely to climb into bed when the electric blanket is on. But what about simply using extra blankets and wearing nice fluffy pajamas that are going to warm you up? Using a tumble dryer for every load of washing. No, we need to think about the wonderful sunshine that we have here in South Africa. And on the days when we have good sunshine, we need to hang out our washing and only reserve a tumble dryer for when it is raining outside. Leaving outside security lights on during the day, that's another big no. Switch off lights, not only in areas where you are not needed, where they are not needed, but during the day as well. Heat loss from a geezer. How can we fix that problem? What about using a geezer blanket to insulate your geezer and prevent heat loss? Using hot water to wash clothes? Most washing machines will allow you to use cold water and most washing powders work just as well in cold water as in hot water. How about this? You're watching a program and you get up and walk out and no one is watching it. We are wasting electricity. So switching off when no one's watching. Charge your cell phones and then switch off the charger. Use carpets and curtains and if you can, even insulate the roof. Try and think of ways to use solar power rather than coal power. And so 
being mindful about what is happening in your house and how you're using electricity is the first step to saving money and saving the environment. Thank <laughs> you.